Bob Kravitz, uh, WTHR sports columnist in Indianapolis. Bob, let's start from the beginning. Okay. When and how did you hear about what the Patriots were doing with the footballs? Well, I received a text about, um, I don't know, sometime after the game, probably around 10, 10, 15, and I had to do a bunch of TV stuff, so I didn't see it until probably around 11.45 midnight. Now, this is Colts-Patriots playoff game. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, I think it was January 18th. And uh, I went and called uh, this uh, particular source back who informed me uh, of what was going on. Uh, I was going to hold it till the next morning, but uh, amazingly I was able to find somebody else who was able to confirm the veracity of uh, what I was told. And I tweeted it out, and um, then all hell broke loose. What was the initial reaction? Uh, I think uh, most of it was people wondering who the hell Bob Kravitz was and what he was doing uh, breaking this story. I think most people thought it was uh, outrageous and absurd. Um, so I, I, I think it was a lot of that. You know, a lot of it was, you know, it's just sour grapes, your, your team. Like, I could care less if the Colts win or lose. But your team got beat 45-7, just take your medicine. Uh, stuff of that nature. But for the most part, I think... Um, there was uh, a sense of disbelief. That, uh, I just think they saw it as the uh, incoherent ramblings of, uh, of, a, of a writer, you know, somewhere out in the Midwest. Colts tip off the NFL prior to the Ravens game? Uh, I'm sorry, you kind of went out on me there a little bit, Dan. Did the Colts tip off the NFL prior to the Ravens AFC title game? Not that I'm aware. I, I, from what, reading, reading the report... And listening to Ryan Grixon at the Combine, I think they did it before their game. Don't hold me to that, but I believe that the email that Grixon wrote was before the um, the Colts-Patriots game saying, hey, you know, we have these suspicions based on uh, some of the footballs that we received after Mike Adams had two interceptions during their regular season game. And, you know, basically said just watch out for this. Uh, keep a close eye on the uh, on the footballs. It's a fine line between cheating and gamesmanship. Was it cheating or gamesmanship in what the Patriots were doing, in your opinion? I believe it was outright cheating. You know, I think, um, you know, gamesmanship is, uh, you know, not putting the tarp on the field, uh, you know, maybe trying to make it a slower field against a team that, you know, has a lot of speed. You know, that's gamesmanship. But I, I think... Um, you know, I mean, those rules, those parameters are there for a reason. Uh, I think it created, an, um, it, it provided um, New England with a, an unfair competitive advantage. Obviously, it's one they didn't remotely need against the Colts. They could have beaten the Colts by 38 using a badminton shuttlecock. But, um, you know, I, I think it's abject cheating, absolutely. What do you think the uh, commissioner will do with the Patriots? Slash no, I think the commissioner is in a really, really tough spot. But, you know, if you're asking my opinion, uh, I think two to four game suspension is probably uh, reasonable. Um, and, and I wonder, too, if there will be some kind of organizational uh, penalty in, in line with uh, the loss of a draft choice. Uh, because it did involve two Patriots employees as well as Tom Brady. So it may be a two-pronged deal. And I I based that on some of the precedent that uh, Troy Vincent had set earlier on, where he came down pretty darn hard on the Atlanta Falcons and the Cleveland Browns for both Noisegate and Texgate. Talking to Bob Kravitz of uh, WTHR.com in Indianapolis. Uh, Finish this statement. If Tom Brady is not suspended... I'm sorry, you went out again. I apologize. If Tom Brady is not suspended. If Tom Brady is not suspended, um, I think it will be another black eye for the league. Uh, I, I think it will be inconsistent with the le- way the league has ruled with, uh, w- in regards to uh, infractions of this sort. What kind of negative feedback did you get? Uh, people, threats? Uh, after I uh, wrote the original uh, couple of pieces and the, and the tweet, yeah, they were, there were threats, nothing that really frightened me or caused me to uh, get any kind of protection. But 
I will say this. When I went to the Super Bowl, uh, I kept a pretty low profile, and on the rare occasions when I went out about town, uh, I, I didn't generally wear my uh, press credential. I just didn't think uh, it made sense to to bring attention to myself. Sure, it was it was relentless. It was personal. And, you know, what was frustrating or really disappointing was it wasn't just fans. You know, I understand fans, and I respect, you know, their their ardor, you know, in, re- in regards to their team. But I was getting trolled and, you know, stuff like that by other media people, you know. And that, to me, was, um, was really uh, disappointing and shocking. Well, you called out the Boston Globe. I think you called them amateurs, didn't you? Well, Boston.com, let's make that distinction. Okay. All right. Yeah, the Boston Globe did a great job. Ben Volan is one of the great pros in our business. Shaughnessy is Shaughnessy. He's fine. Uh, the Boston Globe comported themselves well. It's Boston.com, which I'm told is owned by the Globe, by John Henry, but has a completely different editorial staff, and they are uh, a reprehensible group of writers. Bob, thanks for joining us. Keep your okay. head down. All right. My pleasure. Bob Kravitz, WTHR.